the God was, uh, they got into idolatry, so, so the discipline, God was going to remove idolatry from them. So since basically they were in the promised land, but their hearts were in Babylon, which is a type of the world. Babylon is a type of the picture of the world. Okay, so their bodies physically were in the promised land, but their hearts were in Babylon, or else we would say the world. So God let them. Sometimes uh, God will let you have enough of what you think you want for a season till you get sick of it and realize you don't need it. And what it was, it wasn't to destroy them, it was to restore them. So you had to understand God chastises them that he loves. So he wants to remove something from a nation because he wants to restore them. So uh, the book of Daniel, then this is taking place during the 70 years of captivity. And uh, we'll look at some different things here. So in, in chapter 4 of Daniel, remember in chapter 2, there was already, Nebuchadnezzar had already been given one dream. And so uh, it's, it's so that you understand, because there's going to be some word usage here, that if you don't understand what's what's going on, you won't comp- be able to comprehend. It doesn't make sense to you. Daniel, basically, this one little section here is written by Nebuchadnezzar. And this, uh, this uh, basically... Nebuchadnezzar is going to put in his own words something that happened to him and uh, is going to give you a picture of the heart of God. My title today is A Glimpse, just a little snapshot, A Glimpse of the Glory of God. So basically what's going to happen here is that Nebuchadnezzar is going to explain to us today something that happened to him. Remember Nebuchadnezzar was the king that when, when the children of Israel were in bondage, uh, I mean, when they were in the promised land, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came and conquered the land. And so it basically came in, tore down the walls, destroyed the city, uh, destroyed the temple, took the gold of the temple, and then brought the people into captivity, into bondage. So when you speak of bondage into the world, when you see when they're taken to, to become technically slaves in Babylon, it, it's a picture of the of uh, someone who falls away from God and enters into bondage or captivity, uh, Bondage to uh, unforgiveness, bondage to alcohol, bondage to drugs, bondage to immorality, bondage to uh, uh, gambling, whatever it is, some type of bondage. That's what the that's what the picture of it is here. So when you see then the uh, the nation, the nation basically was taken into captivity, and God was going to remove something, a cancer from the uh, from the nation. Okay, so while they are in Babylon, a type of the world, keep. King Nebuchadnezzar, which basically, just, you know, one of the way we look at it, it's kind of king of the world, spear the run of the world. So basically that they had, Nebuchadnezzar was an extremely powerful king and had conquered many, many, many uh, countries around him. And in, in fact, uh, at this time, I think he'd been, I think he'd been king around 34, 35 years and he just defeated Egypt. And so he just conquered the nation of Egypt. And so there was a whole lot going on. There's, so if, I think it helps you understand to get a little bit of a bird's eye view, just a little bit of perspective here. Uh, if you can look at this objectively, where you know with the setting, it helps me understand uh, with a picture of the of the setting. So if you understand that, that basically Daniel puts this in there, Daniel sees this as so important that Nebuchadnezzar writes this little section, and Daniel sees it as so important to put it in the book. Okay, so we're beginning in chapter four and verse one. Remember now. He's already had the uh, the dream in, in chapter two. He's already we've already been through that, and there was a great big thing that was the head of gold. Well, basically, uh, so that so we understand, God gave Nebuchadnezzar basically a dream to show him history to come. I mean, nation. I mean, different season. He reveals to him much of history, and reveals it to this king, this king Nebuchadnezzar. And so, when he said the the gold, the silver, the brass, and so. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was quite happy there in that, that first dream because uh, he was said, you are the head of gold. Wow. Well, now, Boy. I can, uh, I like a little bit of amen, you know. <laughs> I get to get this dream, and you know, now remember now, he, uh, we go through this, he's not a believer. Um, this is, I think this is very important that, that you look, rem- you have to remember the different aspect of Nebuchadnezzar, one that came to Israel, and took the people in the captivity. And so we're going, to, we're going to look at how will God treat someone 
who's looked upon as an enemy, whether you see it the individual or nation, we're going to look how, how does God treat, how will God treat people? Because you're going to, this is a beautiful picture, a glimpse of God's glory. Okay, so let's get into this and we'll tear into this chapter, Daniel chapter 4 and verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king and all people, nations and languages that dwell upon earth, peace be multiplied to you. That's what Nebuchadnezzar was saying. And listen to what he says. He says, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought towards me. And remember, because he, he's using, you know, he, he's using carnal terms here, because remember, he's been a heathen and he has the experience, and I'm trying not to steal my own thunder here, okay? So he said, I thought it good to show to you the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought towards me. Because he, uh, he had a lot of false gods. A lot of the Egypt and the, uh, Babylon had a lot of false gods, and we'll see more about that in a little bit. Okay, so look, verse 3, how, how great are his signs, and how mighty are his works. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to the generation. Now, that last little statement, his kingdom is from generation to generation. Kings in those days, uh, what they wanted to do, kings wanted to, to keep their kingdom. So they wanted to raise up sons, so then another son, and so be a son, a grandson, so that generation to generation, then the, the kingdom would stay with them. But they knew that sometimes that didn't work. They didn't know what happened. So that's what, so basically, Nebuchadnezzar here now has the revelation. Uh, I'm king, and I'll be here for a season, but there's another God, and he calls the high God. We'd say our God, the highest God. He has this revelation of God. Okay, so he's saying, he's saying, uh, I got a kingdom, but there's someone else got a kingdom, <laughs> an everlasting kingdom. Okay, so he get revelation. See, now, remember now, the Holy Spirit would come to teach you and guide you in all truth. Now we're going to see, we're going to see. Uh, uh, doesn't God have strange methods to teach people? Oh yes. He doesn't use the same method with everybody. Yes. If he has to, he'll use a donkey. Yes. Amen. <laughs> if he has to, he use me or you. So awesome. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> come on, say <Saint> God. <laughs> come on, awesome. God has a tremendous sense oh, of humor. Yeah. And you know, when I first started flowing into the gifts of the. Uh, you know, I, I got this word that came the certain way, and I thought, oh, I got this all figured out now. Every time it comes like this, oh, I, I know that's God's voice. But the next time I came to church, it came like this. So, so he's teaching. He can do anything he wants in any way, at any time, through anybody. <laughs> didn't, he, didn't he speak to, uh, to Jonah through a gourd? Oh, he has ways. He has ways to communicate that are so high. So this king, see, this this heathen king has this revelation. And so he starts off with it, talking about, oh, my, how, how great are his signs. Because he, 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 thought, um, he thought he was so powerful. And he was, he was a uh, man of great influence, a man of great influence. But when someone of great, 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 great influence realizes there's someone a whole lot greater wow. with a whole lot more influence, oh. not just for a little season, not for 40 years, of his kingdom, but for eternity, when someone with a lot of power has a revelation, because see, because uh, if if we just accidentally kind of tiptoed into a little bit of self idolatry, want to take back control of our life, I'm, nobody gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> well, God has methods, and with Jonah was a seaweed hotel. Marvelous love. Anybody beside me been there? Yes. Seaweed just doesn't taste all that good. <laughs> so that's the thrust of this. That's what is happening. The Nebuchadnezzar, this this man who, great, of great, great, great influence, who's been a very wicked man, conquered all these different kinds of things, did all kinds of things to a whole lot of people, and touched God people, and went into the land. God raised him up. You know that God can raise up an enemy. Yes, thank God. God can raise up someone to get his people's attention. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I wonder if he's raising up anybody now. Yes, he is. 
We can look back in history and see, uh, I wonder if God would do that now. Could he do that now? Okay. Okay, so verse 3 again, how great are his signs? And, oh, isn't it, when, when you're convinced how great is his signs, you're so free from temptation. <laughs> you're just, there's such freedom. You know, there's, you know, uh, a coiled snake ready to strike that's full of poison to kill you just doesn't suddenly become attractive to you anymore. Death is not attractive compared to life. Amen. Darkness compared to light. Hell compared to heaven just loses its attraction. Being unclean just not attractive once you become clean. Amen. But if you're, you could be in a season, you're in that no man's land. You see, you're kind of in between. You feel that pull of both ways. Okay, so he has this experience, and he's going to explain this to you, okay? Nebuchadnezzar is just going to explain something to us today. So let's just, verse 3 again, how great is his son, how mighty is his wonder. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. He understands dominion. He wasn't someone in the natural to mess with, because he was an extremely powerful king. Okay, in... Uh, Verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, now he begins to explain. He's going to, Nebuchadnezzar is now going to tell you a story. Okay? And he says, verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I was at rest in my house, flourishing in my palace. Kick back, got his ball game on, just <laughs> resting, enjoying, thinking about how great he was, yeah. how great I am. So his word usage is, I was at rest. <laughs> We'd fought so many wars, so many battles. We'd take so much ground, there's just hardly money out there to feed. I'm at rest, though. I'm flourishing in my palace. And God had the nerve. He sneaks up on me in the dream. <laughs> Minding my own business. I saw, I saw a dream that made me afraid. And you have to think how powerful he is. You have to think how many countries he had conquered, how much land he had taken. You didn't mess with him. So God gives him a dream. And see, I mean, look at the power of God. Here's this great big powerful man with great influence taking all this land, all this country, all this money, all these people, all this military, and God smites him with a dream. Your enemies is not too powerful for God. Amen. This is the most powerful man on earth at that time wow. in the natural. Oh. And God said, how does God paralyze him spiritually? Just a dream. A dream. My God, my God. Oh. I'm t- yeah. So you see why he's starting up how mighty he are at his signs and his wonder. They're so big, they're so great. See, um, oh. he might be more convinced than one or two of us in here. That's right. Well, I didn't know they shot yeah. me down right there. God, quiet right there. See, see, because he has this new, fresh experience. Yeah. Sometimes after we've been saved a while, we got to come back. Say, God, got to bring us back. See, sometimes we got to get our attention to get where we become grateful again. And uh, so the Sunday school lesson this morning was on was on praise. Yes. So Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said, "This my mobile business. I'm in my, I'm in my palace." He used the word palace, didn't say house. I'm in my palace. And I saw a dream that made me afraid. <laughs> that just astounds me right there. And the, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. <laughs> now I want you to stop and think who you're praying for for salvation. <laughs> God is getting to this powerful king just through a dream and through thoughts in his head. Come on, take that God. Uh, is is ISIS too big for God? Did not didn't God defeat communism? So now there's another guy raised up, Putin, and and, and he thinks, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuild what God tore down before. I'll show you. God could just get to him in a dream. Anybody beside me, you ever get a little and we're gonna talk about that, we're gonna go here a little bit. Remember now God resists the proud? Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is a very proud man. Anybody beside me ever 
swell up a little bit and think, well, God, yeah. I remember in the first time I prophesied, I thought, oh, God, you got your something here now. now. I know none of you've ever, I know none of you've ever been that way. <laughs> Come on, Saints of God. Reality. Now, I remember when I first got saved, uh, uh, my thought was, I can't figure out whether there's not three million Billy Grahams. I can answer that question for you now, but I couldn't when I first got saved. So you're going to see, see, just that, that one scripture right there, we could just preach the whole, the rest of the sermon, just right there. God gets to this king, very powerful king, just through a dream and puts thoughts in his head. So now the king, he said, rest until God puts something, uh, gives him a dream. Now he's troubled. That's powerful. Who's rising up against you? Come on. Who's coming against God's kingdom? Who is coming against the church? Is it too big for God? Is there a lot of sin upon her? Where sin abounds, so much more will my grace abound. So let's just take this room. If we, we pull the shades and we turn all the light. We turn all the lights off. It'd be dark in here. You can say, darkness is raining here. All we got to do is turn on the light. God deals with this wicked king just for the dream. And paralyzed, he gets him from a rest in his palace. Now he's afraid and he's troubled. That'll just, that's just, all I can do just to move on. But that'll, that'll just preach for a while, won't it? That'll just preach for a while. Okay. <laughs> I, verse 5, I saw a dream that made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed, now he's thinking about the dream. And the visions of my head troubled me. Awesome. Therefore, so he says, so he basically here what happened. And has that God done, has that God done this to you? Didn't God, haven't you gotten a dream and you didn't know what it meant? Yes. So he had the dream. Now he, he liked the first dream. All the history revealed to him and the head of gold and all this thing. And said, thou art the head of gold. Amen. Amen, brother. I like your dream. I like your dream interpretation gift. It's real good. Now, he has another dream. This is the second dream. So he had this dream, and he doesn't know what it means. So he said, verse 6, Therefore I made a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. I had this dream. And I can't stop thinking about it because I don't know what it means. I know some, I know that God's speaking to me. Wow. I got a dream, but I don't know what it means. And it's bothering me. The, I can't stop thinking about the thoughts and the visions. So he said, make the decree, all the wise men, come to and make known to me the interpretation. Verse 7, then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, or the soothsayers. That's basically all the false prophets, all the false teachers. So, uh, see, all these people are fo- serving false gods. None of them have the Spirit of God within them. He saw, he him, so he brings in all his, all his counselors and all his magicians, the soothsayers, and he told the dream before them, but they, but they did not make known to me. Now, remember, this is Nebuchadnezzar. They, they did not make known to me, Nebuchadnezzar, the interpretation of the dream. See, the carnal mind... Cannot understand things of the Spirit. So that since they do not have the Spirit of God within them, and since the Spirit of God gave the dream, you must have the Spirit of God to interpret the dream. So you have to remember now, God had raised up Daniel, and God, and God had given Daniel great favor. Now Babylon is the type of the world. Technically they're, they're in bondage, they're in slavery, but God had raised up and gave Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, gave them favor, and they had been elevated, so that basically they were in the world, but had favor, okay? They're a picture of, of you being in the world, but not of the world, and being promoted even in the world so that we can have a job out there. It's so easy to get promoted in, in secular work because there's a lot of people don't want to work. And they'll steal from the company, and they'll cause strife in the company. They'll steal from the company, and they'll, they'll cause all kind of trouble. they come late, leave early. So it's so easy to be promoted in the world. So, so there's all these wise men, and, and basically Daniel is the top one. So either they didn't want to hang with Daniel, or they're, basically Daniel's not there at this time, because probably they just said, well, uh, we'll just bring these people in here. So Daniel's not there. 
So they, they bring all the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers in there and say, tell me the meaning of the dream. Yeah. And they cannot give it. Ooh. Now, this, yeah. this is just sidebar here, okay? Very important we understand 1 Corinthians 14, 2. A man who speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh mystery, does not speak to man, but speak to God. So it's very important that we understand we pray in English, the devil hears and the devil knows. God knows and the devil knows and other people know. But when you pray in tongues, the devil doesn't know what you're saying. That's why hell didn't want you praying in tongues. See, because the devil cannot interpret what you're saying. It is a mystery. <laughs> Tell them that do not have the Spirit of God. So when you pray in tongue, it means a man is speaking in the unknown tongue. He does not speak to men. He speaks in the God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why hell doesn't want you. That's why there's a lot of warfare against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because it's a language the devil can't understand. And uh, you may, you know, when you, when you first start praying in tongue, you may hear a voice. You may be by faith. You get the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith, then you begin to pray in tongues by faith. You hear, sometimes you hear a little demonic voice. It's just a bunch of gibberish. The devil trying to stop you from praying. See? Because he can't understand what you're saying. He feels left out. And he wants, he wants to hear what you're saying so he can come strategies to get God's plan for your life. So the natural man cannot understand the comprehend things of the Spirit. So hell doesn't want you to pray in tongues. So that's why God gave you the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's why hell and false religion will come again. That's the soothsayers. Yeah. <laughs> Can't help. So they, they come and they, they cannot interpret. Verse 8. But at the last, Daniel came in. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar is telling the story. At the last, the others came and they could not interpret. But then Daniel... But at last Daniel came in before me, whose name was built to Shazar, now, which means Baal, protect his life. Remember, that's his false god. One of his many false gods, but the, one of their main gods was Baal. And so he gave him, when, uh, uh, to, to explain it this way, when, when they came from uh, the promised land into Babylon, they wanted to rename them. And in renaming them, they won't take away your identity of believer. They wouldn't allow them to, to, uh, uh, to sacrifice. They wouldn't allow them to, uh, to have their feast, to, to do the different things of, quote, unquote, their, uh, of their faith in God, the faith in Jehovah. They want to take away their identity. The world wants to take away the believer's identity. Okay? Okay, so they, they renamed the people. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego wasn't their, wasn't their real name. They, that's what they named them. Uh, and so they... Uh, Daniel was his name, but, but the king named him Belteshazzar, which means Baal, protect his life. But we're going to see Baal, didn't, Baal couldn't, uh, God was protecting Daniel's life, and uh, Baal's not protecting your life, and he's not protecting Daniel's life. God's protecting your life, and that's faith in God. Okay, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. Baal was a Babylonian deity. Okay, and in whom... Now, what he's saying, uh, and whom? Now, this is Nebuchadnezzar's language, so you hear him. He doesn't know at this time really how to communicate in the way we would say these things. So he's saying these things to a person who just had the experience with God who's been a heathen. Okay, he said, in whom is the spirit of the holy God? And before him I told the dream. So to bring, bring all these other people in, they could not interpret the dream. See, because the natural mind cannot comprehend things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. The question is not is someone in church building or not. The question is, are they alive in God? Is the God of life alive in them, free in them? That's what uh, our goal is not to get people in the ch in the church building. Our goal is to get them to God and God in them, that the kingdom of God be established with them, that they would become fruitful and become alive in God. The thief come but to steal, kill, destroy, but Jesus had come that you may have life and life more abundantly. So I ask myself. Do I feel dead or alive? Oh. Okay, so the word life means alive. It means to be made lively. I don't want to be here and not be lively. I don't want to be here and not be alive. That's my inheritance. And I've not given it up for anything or anyone. Money can't get it. Come on. No. The sex not going to get it. The world not going to get it. Because I'd rather be alive than dead. That's simple. 
And who was the spirit of the Holy God? That I, and I, I told him, I told Daniel the dream. Oh, built the Shazar. Now listen how he said, mess, this is his word, word usage, because he doesn't really know what to say. Master of the magicians, because he was basically, he was over them all. Now, you have to understand that there, technically, see, he's a Hebrew child, and here he is in, in Babylon, and he's over. He had been promoted over. He's the, he's the number one, what they call the wise men. Because the others could not interpret it. And so he says, O Belteshazzar, master of the magician, because I know, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. How did he know that? Watch his life and remember the dream interpreted before? Okay. Okay, there are people watching your life. And so uh, it's not, am I in church or am I out of church? The question is, am I alive at God or am I dead in church? Yes. <laughs> That's the question. Because okay? I don't want to be in here and still be oh, dead. No, I can be here or out there and be dead, or I can be here or out there and be alive. Yes. And I choose to be alive. Amen. And, and it's that simple. And I don't care who tells me well, what other people think, what they say, what they do. Amen. I know how to be alive to God. And if someone tells me you can't do that, I say, well, I, I can cast out devils because God, God said, told me to cast. These signs follow them to believe. When I don't believe, well, that's why they're not following you. Yes. These signs follow me. Yes. Amen. You want to keep yours? That's fine. I don't want mine. Neither. I've had them long enough. Yes. <laughs> oh, Belteshazzar, master of the music. Now, remember, this guy's trouble. This guy's afraid. A very powerful man afraid. Imagine the President of the United States afraid. See, you've got to look at Nebuchadnezzar like a type of a president and a leader of some great nation. Because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubles you. See, he's saying that because something's troubling him. You're not troubled, but I... <laughs> no secret troubles you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions in my head, in my in my bed. Now listen to what he said. Now he's explaining what he saw. He's explaining to Daniel the dream. I saw and I I'm, I'll go. I'm not going to preach this as we go along. Uh, I saw and I behold a tree in the midst of the earth. You're going to find out he's the tree, and the height thereof was great, a powerful kingdom. And the tree grew and was strong in the height thereof, reaching the heaven. And the sight thereof to the end of all the earth, his, his uh, kingdom was really spreading. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much. And in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it. That's how big his kingdom is. Huge, 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 huge kingdom. The beast of the field had shadow under it. The fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. A lot of people, a lot of money, a lot of food. There's a whole lot going on there. Now, uh, verse 13, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher. In the Hebrew, that means like an angel, a guardian angel, a watcher. I saw in my head upon my bed, behold, a watcher and a holy one came, Came down from heaven. He cried, he cried aloud and said thus, Cut down the tree. Cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves. The sound of judgment coming to the tree? Yes. Who's the tree? Nebuchadnezzar. And scatter his fruit and let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Very important. And listen to the next part. Nevertheless, leave the stump, stump of the tree, awesome. leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Awesome. Now, why would he leave the stump? You ever cut down a tree and it bloomed again? Yes. Now, hang on, Chris. We're really going somewhere. <laughs> Nevertheless, verse 15, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, iron, bondage, brass, judgment, in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion let his portion be, let him, the tree, let his portion be with the beast 
and the grass of the earth. Now listen to what it says here, okay? Now, I want you to be able to think of people that you've seen really alive of God, that are not alive of God, um, and then, well, let me use myself as an example. When we were so whacked out on the drugs, we, we, we had crazy. We just... Okay, verse 16. Now listen to what he said. He's explaining the dream to Daniel. And he, he said, Let his heart be changed from a man's heart and let a beast or animal's heart be given to him. Wow. <laughs> that is scary. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, so many people that, you know, when you minister, when you minister uh, in jails and people, people think, you know, drugs and partying, that's all fun for a season, and then they get arrested for drugs, and they're looking at 10, 20, 30 years in, in jail, and they're locked up, you go visit them, they said, I'm, and they'll tell you, I feel locked up like an animal. Okay, so, what this, there's so many prophetic pictures here, okay? So he says, in the dream, Nebuchadnezzar is getting this dream, he doesn't know what it means, he's greatly troubled, he's afraid, no one else can interpret it. The world doesn't have the answers. The world doesn't have the answers. The demonic does not have the answers. No one has the answer other than God. God, God has the answer. And Daniel two twenty two says, "God will reveal the deep and secret thing." See, you and I got to learn how to live close enough that we have the answers for the world's problem. Not just coming to church service and endure church service and can't wait to get out. We got to know God. They that know the God shall be strong and shall do it. Hell doesn't want you to know God. Hell doesn't want you to hear the voice of God because then you will be able to speak for God. So then, if if God can use one man, Daniel, to have an answer for Nebuchadnezzar, king of the world, so to speak, that's why hell doesn't want you to know God. I'm not going to come in here, be bored, endure a church service, can't wait to get out there, go waller in the world. That's a bunch of nothing. If I'm going to do this, I'm going all the way to God. I want to hear his voice. I want to know God. They that know God shall be strong and shall do exploit. To know him and the business, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable. Uh, I'm telling you, we're really going somewhere. Yes. Can, uh, can you imagine you know, yes, calling someone out, giving them, giving them a word? See, God giving some, God giving the king a word. Yes. He really, what God's saying to the king, your heart's going to, you're no longer going to have the heart of a man. You're going to have the heart of an animal. How would you like to call someone and say, "Thus saith the Lord"? <laughs> well, they be calling the, they be calling them in the white coats and get this guy out of here. Don't come back to our church. Come on, does this, the this Bible say all Scripture is inspired by God? All right. But you have to understand that God has methods. He has methods to restore, not to destroy. And if you don't understand His method, if you don't understand His love, if you don't understand His patience, we love it when God's patient with us. Sometimes we question, sometimes God gets on our nerves when He's patient with our enemies. You're too patient with... And then we go, God, be patient with me. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. Get up, God! A little bit of confusion there, right? Yes. Anybody beside me just been a little tempted to quit drawing the call down the fire anointing? See, Jesus said, you do not know. You do not know what spirit you're of. Now, you're going to see, I'm telling you, you are going to get a glimpse of the glory of God. You're going to get a very glimpse of the very heart of God. You're going to see the power of God. And here's this king. And God speaks to Swell up, eat powerful. A man of great influence, of great wealth, a great army. All these people, all these people, all this money, all this territory. And God smites him. And God paralyzes him just through a dream. That's how big God is. Can God stop the spirit over America? The king of the world, Babylon. One dream. I'm telling you, this is a beautiful story. Yes. Now, this is the dream going on. And remember, he's saying it to, to Daniel, let his heart be chained. So in the dream, God is telling Nebuchadnezzar, the tree, let the tree's heart be chained from that of a man, and let a beast's heart be given to him. 
and let seven times pass over him. We're going to find out that's seven years. Okay, it's for seven years, he's going to go through something. It tells him how long. Now, the reason, does God know everything? He does, doesn't he? Okay. The reason he says seven times, because he knows how long it's going to take for Nebuchadnezzar to deal with his stuff. How long will it take me to deal with my stuff? How long will it take you to? That's how much God knows. You know, I left something out of a message. Remember, uh, it was a Jephthah, whoever it was, that had that powerful response. And uh, there was Cyrus, and there was a there was basically what with the part that I left out. Many years before Cyrus was born, there was a prophecy that there would be someone by the name of Cyrus raised up. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. That was that's true about Cyrus, but. It was it was Josiah. That was it was my message on Josiah, that it was prophesied many years before Josiah was ever born that there'd be a king that would be raised up by the name of Josiah. That was the message. It was on when did I preach that? Last Sunday, two Sundays ago, sometime recently. But it was prophesied before Josiah was ever born. He wasn't conceived yet. Many years before he was ever conceived, okay, that there would be a king by the name of Josiah. They would come and tear down the high places and the groves and all the false gods and tear them down. See, uh, if you want to grow in God, let God lay the axe to your... See, basically, here's what God is saying. Nebuchadnezzar, you're the tree, and I'm going to lay the... You're going to be cut down, but I'm going to leave a stump. Now, hang on, we're going to Don't you be reading ahead. <laughs> Steal my thunder over there. <laughs> Let his heart be changed from a man's. Let a beast's heart be given to him. Let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. Now, this is very important that you understand this thing right here. If if you get this one point right here, it's going to really help you understand the heart of God and what God is really saying. To the intent that the living, that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. Oh, you're so awesome, Lord. God, you know, see, you remember now. Bring that revelation. This is the dream that God gave Nebuchadnezzar, and he's explaining it to Daniel. So God is explaining to Nebuchadnezzar in the dream why the dream's coming. So that the living would know. Because Nebuchadnezzar wants them to think how great he is. And when we come to church and we try to pretend and exalt ourselves to other people how great we are. God resists the proud. And you may, the lumberjack may come in not with an axe but with a chainsaw. One thing they've got. I've had the rug pulled out from me under me several times. I'm telling you that the Bible said that if a man, a man exalted, uh, you be if you exalt yourself, you be a base. Okay, and God resist the proud. You're going to see. You're going to see how God will deal with the wicked king that's exalting himself, and what people think. How great I am! How great I am! So in the dream, God is telling him. The purp- Here's the whole purpose. Here's why everything will happen. Verse 17. The matter of the decree of the water, the decree by the, by the word of the Holy One, to the intent that the living, that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. Nebuchadnezzar, there's a kingdom over your kingdom. And God will give it to whosoever He will and set, and set up over it the basis of men. Not many wide, not many more mighty, not many noble called. I have called the foolish thing of this world to confound the wise, and men would not trust in the wisdom of men, but in the power and in the demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. That's a good time to say amen. Come on, say to God. The bigger the sinner you were, the more you qualify for the ministry. He that's forgiven much, loved much. Stop feeling guilty about your past. 
mad. That's why we needed Jesus. Uh, uh. I mean, uh, is this preaching to you? I mean, this is really preaching to me. Now look at verse 18. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, and, and Nebuchadnezzar is writing that he wrote this section, okay? Verse 18. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now therefore, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof for as much as all the wise men in my kingdom the wise men in my kingdom, you get to be careful who you hang around. Amen. <laughs> be your kingdom, Lord. Be careful who you let speak it to your spirit, man. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom, they are not able to make known to me the interpretation. See, God is showing him, you think you're powerful, and you surrounded, you surrounded yourself. you got all these people on salary, they don't know anything. They can't help you at all. They had no answers. It's why you paying them salary. All these wise men. But one man of God had got the answer. Now, Louis said, all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to, to make known to me their temple. But thou are able. You are able. For the spirit of the holy gods is in you. See, um, it, it's this simple. People are looking or someone that got answers. When uh, and back in my heathen days, my hippie days, you know, I was in a band, drove a Corvette, I was coming out of a sports hero. And when uh, when uh, sin was fun for a season, then payday came. Yes. <laughs> and the wages of the sin is. Yes. Okay, so I began to look. You know, I I began to. I what what about doing drugs? I want to see well, what does a seventy or eighty year old person look like that does drugs. Well, couldn't find it. They're all dead. <laughs> Very true. All dead or in prison. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, let me find 70, 60, 70, 80 years old drunk. said, oh, Jesus, I don't want to be like that. And then I went to church and I saw spirit-filled people. I said, well, that's what I want to be like. Yeah. See, the king could recognize somebody. Um, we don't want to be in here and look like someone's been sucking on lemons for about 10 years. Yeah. Come on, we ought, to, we ought to be alive to God. If we're going to do this, let's go all the way with God. Amen. You didn't hold back from sinning. You didn't go to a nightclub and, and come out with some little wimp sissy glass. That's all I want all night long. I don't want to come around the influence. Come on, say, Deb God. You didn't, you didn't see someone attracted to the opposite sex in your heat today. You didn't come in and see someone attracted to you. Well, I don't want to get too close to you. You know, you might want to smooch. Nonsense. See, if we, if we went all the way with the world, let's go all the way with God. Because God is better than anything that the world has to offer. So basically, here's what I'm saying to you. I want what Daniel had. Yes, I'm not there yet. Me too. We'll but i got to go. Yes, Come on, because God is no respecter of person, and I bring that before God. Because I read uh, within the last couple of weeks that, that God revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh. I said, I, I quote the scripture to God. God, reveal yourself to me right here. Yes, Lord. Right now. So. Because I want to know you. I pray scripture to God. No. Come on, I'm telling you. Doesn't no respect your person. Amen. I don't want to be in here and not know God. Amen. Not see God, not experience God. Yes. Okay, yes, so the king, the the king here, see, he's telling the story. He's not saved. Nope. But he knows someone that got a gift. Yay. I mean, uh, wow. <laughs> way back in the 80s, I passed to the country church. And there was a corner restaurant. At this corner restaurant, the lady that one day went to the corner restaurant, and the restaurant was closed. So how come the restaurant closed? They said, well, the lady's a fall-down drunk. The lady that owns it, she's a fall-down drunk. I didn't know she was a fall-down alcoholic drunk. So I took that as a call from God. So I would begin to go in there and tell her that God loved her. I begin to go in there and give her tracts and tell the God wanted to help her. So... One day, I go into the corner restaurant to witness to her, just tell her that God loved her. And I walk in, there's a few preachers sitting at a great big round table, smoking. One of them got a cigar in his mouth. In front of her and in front of the customers, and a preacher sitting there smoking a cigar. 
What's interesting, when I walked in the door, he put the cigar out. He could do it before God because he had no awareness of God. So I walk in the door, and the, and the preacher's sitting there, and he sees me walk in the door, and he puts, puts, his, puts his cigar out. So I walk back to the lady. Again, tell her God loves her, give her a track, walked out. So it wasn't long after that, my phone rings. And it was the corner restaurant lady. Wanted to die. Out of all the preachers in that town, who did she call? She didn't call the one smoking a cigar. There are people watching your life. The devil trying to tell you how bad you are, and yeah. people are watching you. The devil wants it to compromise and not be alive to God. I want to be alive. I want what Daniel had. Amen. That the king of this nation, this most influential man upon the earth at that time, all this power and all this influence, he comes to Daniel. I got a need. Wow, that's because he saw something in Daniel. Wow. People are watching your life. Oh. They, they hope you. There are people that hope you make a mistake. They want you to choke the parakeet. They want you to flamethrower them out. The poor little parakeet said there were no feathers left. They want you to make a mistake so they can use against it because they're people that love their sin. Yes. See, but you love God. Yes. You're going to be faithful. You make a mistake, you're going to confess it, you're going to repent. You're going to get up from there. Amen. You're going to get up, from, get up from there. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Yes. And become whom God wants you to be. Amen. Everybody's made a mistake. Yes. All right. The king, the king of the, the most influential man, his, his mouth confession, Daniel, you are able. And the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Could he, he knew there was something different about Daniel, didn't he? Yes. Saying, whether people want to admit it or not, they can tell there's something different about you. Amen. You don't talk like them, you don't walk like them, you don't behave like them, you don't go where they go. They go to darkness and you go to light. Yes. Yes. They're cursing the paint off the wall and you're prophesying the paint off the wall. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, glory. Verse 19. Then Daniel, who they call built the Shazar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar tells him this dream. And see, why he's telling the dream, the interpretation is coming. Many times it, and when messages the tongues come forth, as soon as the message in tongues come forth, the interpretation, someone may be receiving the interpretation. So sometimes when, when the anointing, has, when the atmosphere has been taken and the glory cloud of God has been formed, sometimes you've got to wait upon it, sometimes a little bit of struggle, sometimes we will be tired of the natural and that affects it. But many times when the message in tongues, you hear, um, as soon as the message in tongues start coming, you hear, you hear Pastor David start weeping. The reason he's weeping is because the interpretation is already coming. Him, and he's feeling the thoughts of God. Yes. Okay? So then, while he's telling the dream, while Nebuchadnezzar is telling the dream, Daniel is given understanding. He's saying it one night, and it's being interpreted by the Spirit of God. Wow. So Daniel then is astonished for one hour. Wow. Okay, for one hour, the word astonished me means he was stupefied. He was stunned. Wow. It means the grown nun, he was devastated. He was amazed. Now understand now, Daniel knows the interpretation of this dream, and so he's thinking, if I tell this king, he's the tree, they're going to get cut down, um, I could have my, I could never walk out of this room, I could lose my head. Come on, say it to God. Come on. There's... <laughs> but see, he got faith in God, so he's astonished, and, he, and, and this is like, such a powerful dream, he's astonished for one hour, he couldn't even speak, he's stunned. And says, and his thoughts troubled him, terrified him, alarmed him, trembled him, he was dismayed, he was vexed. He's trying to, what can I do with this interpretation? Now the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, discerns something going on inside of Daniel. So the king spoke and said, Daniel, do not let the dream, nor the interpretation thereof trouble you. Daniel answered and said, My Lord, the dream, this is, this is, look at the love of Daniel now. Daniel, Daniel was saying, 
a, a wish of this dream really would be for them to hate you, and the interpretation it would be for your enemies. I would rather them get cut down than... That's the love, that's the mercy of God. See, when, when here's when we know we get the real Jesus. When we'd rather see our enemies have mercy than a lightning bolt judgment. Then you, then we become useful. Okay? So that, so that's basically why God could use Daniel to say this way because he's saying, I'd rather, I would rather interpretation be for your enemy and them that hate you. I do not, he's trying to say this is for you, but I would rather be for, And Daniel answered and said, My Lord, let it be for them that hate you. Verse 20, the tree that you saw, which grew and was strong, whose height reached to the heaven, and the sight thereof, all thereof, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, a large kingdom, and the meat thereof, and under all the beasts of the field dwelt upon the branches of the fowls of heaven, had their habitation. It's you, O king. You're the tree. That takes a lot of courage right there. But remember the king the king said, Tell me the truth. Verse twenty two, it is you, O king. You are the one that has grown, and you become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches into heaven, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven, coming down from where? Heaven. Coming down from heaven, saying Cut down the tree and destroy the tree, yet leave the stump, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth. Okay, leave the stump in the roots. Don't take up the roots. Because it will still be able to draw. I will destroy the tree, but not the stump, not the roots. Because I got a use. Gun may uh, lay the axe to the root of certain evil in our hearts. He may remove some areas, but I'm going to keep the good parts. Amen. God knows how to, I I double dog dare you to plead with God. Remove the dross. Yes, Lord. Not you. Remove the dross from me. Purify the gold. Purify the silver. Cleanse me. Purge me. Sanctify me. Refine me. Wash me. Prepare me. Get me ready for your holy purposes. Christianity is just not enduring some dead, dry, meaningless ritual that doesn't convict us and challenge us, that give us a Holy Ghost slap to wake us up. Now, I I don't have time to develop this because I I can't go there because of time. But you have to understand what a great man of prayer, this Daniel's really, the more I study Daniel, the more excited I get about Daniel. This guy had a tremendous prayer life. This man knew God. Okay? If we have time, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that uh, a little bit at the very end, but I'll make sure I get the main text in here, okay? So he, he tells this king, you are the one, and uh, be cut down, verse 23, whereas the king saw the watcher and the holy one coming down from him, saying, cut down the tree, destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots of the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion, let his or your King Nebuchadnezzar, let your portion be with the beast of the field until seven times pass over him or seven years. This is the interpretation, O King, verse 24, and this is the decree of the Most High which has come upon my Lord the King that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass as oxen. Eat grass. Yeah. Yeah. We mock. Oh, nobody going to make me eat grass. Well, we might have smoked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also had some of those funny brownies, you know. We just talk plain around here. We're not, we're not real deep theological. We're just where the shoe leather meets the carpet. We just, we just talk plain. <laughs> Some of us walk through a few alleys, okay? We just, not just a few times around the block, we walk through, through a few alleys, okay? 
Kesha. <laughs> Your dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field that shall make thee eat grass as an oxen. Eat grass as an oxen. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass thee over. Now, no, don't miss this point right here. Tell you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. Does God have a goal and all He's going to do? Yes. What's His goal? He would know God. He rules the one God wants who to know Him? Yes. Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Is Nebuchadnezzar a righteous man with the time he has the dream? No. No. Okay, so, so if, if God is giving a plan and a strategy for Nebuchadnezzar, it's a hope for you. My God, my God, come on, Saint of God, you see, come on, get, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. No matter where you are with God, if God will treat Nebuchadnezzar like this, you say, well, now, wait a minute now, seven years, God knows how long it will take him to admit. I'm telling you, the patience of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the love of God. How long will it take me to deal with my stuff? How long will it take you to deal with your stuff? And, and remember, remember now, remember when Daniel would, they made that little decree and you don't pray, you don't talk to any other God other than the false God and, and, uh, and, and, and the Bible said, and Daniel tiptoed to his little place and he went, went to this window toward Jerusalem and he prayed three times a day. And he prayed three times a day as he did before. Yes. Who do you think he's praying for? He's praying for those circumstances. Nebuchadnezzar's one of them that he's... Yes, for. Doesn't the Bible say pray for them that are in authority? Yes. So then, how, how will Nebuchadnezzar... Somebody prayed. Yes. Somebody prayed for Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. The plumber's wife prayed for me. Yes. Come on, those of you who know my story. The plumber's wife prayed for me. She had it. Out in the country, I was raised in a little town. They had her people, and, and there was a plumber's wife. And they had some like eight children, and uh, the, her husband was a plumber. Ran the business out of the house, and she would. They would all let her go down to the basement of the house and pray for an hour a day. And they said the business run better, the family run better, everything go better. Let her go pray an hour a day, and everything else goes better. Amen. And when she'd go down there and talk in tongue, she had like the FBI got the ten most wanted hit list. She had the ten biggest sinners in my hometown area. My name's at the top of the list. That's awesome, Lord. So I, she prayed me to the kingdom. Yes, she did. Who do you think prayed Nebuchadnezzar in? Yeah. Come on, saints of God. Amen. What I say, I'm double dog dare you to begin praying for your biggest enemy. Amen. My God, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> if there's, if God is going to be patient with Nebuchadnezzar, is there hope? See, the devil trying to make you feel bad because something's in your life, and everybody got something. You know, there might be some little bitty parakeet graves way back there in the back of the lot. No one knows them out. <laughs> you all like that little parakeet. He's saying now, seven times shall pass over thee. That's how long it will take you, Nebuchadnezzar, to know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and I, God, will give my kingdom to whoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, your kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that you have known that the heavens do rule. Now, look right here just a minute, because I need to inject this before I forget. We need to understand this, this prophetic revelation interpretation is coming to the king in his court. Other people are going to hear this because Nebuchadnezzar will spend seven years eating grass like out in a field, in a, like an animal. And see, if the prophetic word had not come to the court, his enemies would have went and killed him to take over his... But they wouldn't touch... My God, my God, come on, say them, God. Then the wisdom of God, this prophetic revelation come forth in the court in front of all the people so that when Nebuchadnezzar is on his hands and knees eating like an animal, out of like on a farm, they wouldn't dare touch him. His enemy would kill him because, now stop and think how much money he had. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Can we just talk plain here just a little bit? Sure. Do you remember when America's public enemy number one, Osama bin Laden, they offered uh, $25 million. Anybody that give up Osama bin $25 million. And not a single Muslim came forth and betrayed him. Some of you have been betrayed for 25 cents. $25. See, you have to understand. See, there'd be people that will kill for your position, your title. The spirit of Cain is always willing to kill an Abel. $25 million dollars. Give up Osama bin Laden. We'll give you $25 million. And no one betrayed him. How much did they betray Jesus for? 30? That would preach, wouldn't it? Okay. Okay, the verse... Verse 26, And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, and thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. So basically, here's what's happening. God is going to answer Daniel's prayer and convince. And going to convince Nebuchadnezzar, who's God. And who's and Nebuchadnezzar, you've got this kingdom to last this long, and I, God, my kingdom will last the everlasting, eternity. Now, which one do you want, Nebuchadnezzar? They remember the first three verses. Oh, you are most high God. You are great. You are the... So that's why he was saying all this thing. Because the, the, well, let me go to verse 27. Wherefore, O king, this is, this is Daniel, okay? Speaking to the king. He's interpreting. Now, th- this is a... <laughs> this, technically, this is a slave counseling... The most influential king. Wow. That's, powerful. <laughs> that's basically, yeah. technically, that's exactly what's happening. Exactly. That's exactly what's happening. This guy who technically is a slave in a foreign land. Yes. You may be the lowest worker in some great big company. And the owner come to you for counsel. That's right. Yes. Ask you for prayer. Cast this thing out of yes. me. Lay your formerly nicotine stained hands on me and. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, glory. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Verse 27. Wherefore, King, listen to the, what he says. Let my counsel, <laughs> the slave counseling of the king, <laughs> let my counsel be acceptable to you. Look at the gentleness. Tenderness to love. The king knows he, he the king knows that Daniel loves him. Let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins. Slave telling a king Stop sinning. <laughs> See, um, be careful saying, Well, I want to win them with love. Sometimes that's just fear of confrontation. We don't want to tell someone the truth. We'll let them go to hell. Because we didn't have the courage. We, we feared the rejection. We feared backlash. So we never said anything. And we slapped it off as, I'm going to win them with love. Daniel told the king, stop your sinning. And that was love. Yeah. Well put. Isn't she beautiful? (laughs) Let my counsel be acceptable to you, King. Break off the sins by righteousness 
and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Show mercy to the poor. Who's the poor? All the Hebrew slaves building cities for the false gods. Someone, see, God's looking for a, see, we could call this Daniel the remnant. A picture of the remnant church that will not bow their knee to Baal. That will tell, if we got to tell a king, see, there's always be a John the Baptist that will tell a Herod, you have your brother's wife. If you're going to be that bold, just be ready to lose your head. Come on. There's going to be a Daniel that will tell the king, Stop mistreating the poor. You've got all these people in slavery, working them seven days a week. You're not getting them food. Be merciful if repent of your sin and begin treating these people rightly. And not just the Hebrews, there's all these other countries that he brought these people, building cities for all these false gods. And that is happening in America. Building a whole lot of things for false gods. And God is raising up a remnant church that will preach, they will point their finger right in the face of the king or whoever. Oh, yes, he is. Oh. Be careful knowing God, you begin to think like him. You begin to feel what he feels. You had to understand, David loved the king. He loved this king. But he didn't love the sin. And so he tells him, listen to my counsel. Slave counseling the king. Don't tell me God doesn't have a sense of humor. Break off your sins by righteousness and your iniquities by showing, start showing mercy to the poor. If it may be the lengthening of thy tranquility. You know, you, God just may give you a space here, a peace. Verse 20, and all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, something is said here, if you don't understand, we've got to be able to add one plus one come up with two. And in verse 29 says, well, let me say verse 20 again. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked into the palace of the king of Babylon. The end of 12 months. The dream came, the interpretation came, the counsel came, the advice came, told him what to do. Twelve months later, he hadn't done anything. Wow. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And they did that day, they provoked God to anger, departing from the living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. They did not enter in because of unbelief. The word preached did not profit them because it was not being mixed with faith with them that hear it, see that you are dull of hearing, we can become so comfortable coming to church, hearing what we ought to do, and not doing it. That's why the world calls people that come to church hypocrites. If there's anything we we need to do, we need to hear what the Spirit, we need to plead and fast with God for near to hear what the Spirit is saying, but be careful if you hear it, God will expect us to do it. It's not the hearers that are justified. It's the doers of the word. If you mess with the real Jesus, he'll mess with everything in your life because he doesn't like what sin does to us. If you hang around the real Jesus, you begin to act. You'll think like him, walk like him, talk like him, behave like him. Twelve months go by. Wouldn't you think that you could at least, I mean, I'm not a theologian, I'm not, my IQ is at the highest upon the face. But I can add one plus one to come up with two. You would think that. Twelve months go by. And the king walks into the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Verse 30, the king spoke. Now do you think he confessed sin? Do you think he repented? Do you think he stopped mistreating the poor? The king spoke. Yeah, the king of self has spoken to me once or twice too. <laughs> well, that went over like a lead balloon. It's <laughs> real, king of self. 
The king spoke and said, listen closely, is not this great Babylon that I, listen to the personal pronoun, that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, it's my power, it's my kingdom, and for the honor of my majesty. Yeah, does that sound a little bit for me like Isaiah chapter 14 with the five ill I wills of pride? I will jump my throne. I'll be like the most high. I'll be like the cloud. I'll be, I will, I will, I will. And Lucifer, I, I need to, I need to share that. Let me, Isaiah 14, let me just read that. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou had been cut down to the ground, you that did weaken the nation. For that see, um, Nebuchadnezzar weakened the other nation. And Nebuchadnezzar is going to get cut down. For well, thou hast said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mountain of the congregation of the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God. Yet, Lucifer, you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now let's go back to Daniel chapter 4. So Nebuchadnezzar's mouth confession after all that's been happening. All the, the warning dream from God. I have built this house for my kingdom, my power. It's my power. It's the honor of my majesty. Verse 31, a strange thing happens. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it has been spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. God spoke it. You think it will happen? Question. Did God tell him what he was doing wrong earlier? Yeah. Did God tell him what would happen? Yeah. Very important question. Did God give him time to repent? Yeah. Is God patient to him? Okay. Is God showing him love? Is God being merciful to him? Yeah. Did God gave him space. Remember in Revelation, I gave, I gave her space to repent. Yeah. Yeah. Yet the kingdom now shall be taken from thee. Remember when, when Saul... Was told what to do? Yeah. Kill all these things? They didn't do it? He said, now, because you have rejected the word of God, you have been rejected from being king. Yeah. See, when God gives us the word, and in that word is an assignment, God will stand back and say, do I come into alignment with the assignment? And God knows who we are by what we do, not what we say with our mouth. Because when God gives us the word, we don't obey the word, then we're no different than Saul. And Saul was rejected for a big king. Every believer called to be a king and a priest. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A chosen generation. And he had been called out of darkness and into light. I will not just come out of, I'll go into light. Out of, I'll disconnect here and I'll get connected to there. I want to plug into light. I want to be alive. So then God had to speak 12 months after the word. 12 months after the dream. Twelve months after Daniel had interpreted. Twelve months go by, and he didn't deal with the homework assignment God gave him. You ever come to church and get convicted? Yes. And you knew there was something. Yes. You knew there was something to con you were convicted, something to confess, something to repent, something that when you left here, you needed to stop doing, you need to unhook from that and hug and hook in the light. Yeah. Something that God spoke to and we said, yes, God. <laughs> but when we walked out, yeah. we saw ourselves in the mirror of the word. But when we walked out, we conveniently fought, forgot. We conveniently turn on the electronic devices to forget. So we'd no longer be convicted. So we, we watch people pretend, pretend to murder one another, pretend to fornicate with one another, until we conveniently forgot the assignment, and then we come back to church to hear another message, to hear another word that has another assignment, What God's trying to develop in me is the fear of the Lord. Yes, So while the word while the king is talking about himself, boy, will that ever preach. 
I, uh, James 4, 6 said, God resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Proverbs eighteen twelve says, Pride will end in destruction, but humility is an honor. Oh. I could say more if there's more time. Let me, let me go on here. Okay. Well, the word was in the king's mouth, the pharaoh, the, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you. They shall drive thee from men. You no longer be around people. You're not going to be in the palace any longer. And your dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass as an oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee. Seven years. And tell. What will God, is, God trying to, is God trying to destroy him? Or is he... Or is this his personal trial? Is this his testing? Is this his fiery furnace? Is this his lion's den? Let me just say then, you don't want to volunteer to go into a lion's den if you're not right with God. <laughs> you need to be right with God to have the favor of God. You, we cannot claim the promises of God without fulfilling the conditions of God. And there are conditions. We don't have time to, we don't have time to go there today. So he says, until you know, the end of verse 32, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom and will give it to whoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. The same hour. Remember, God gave him a year to repent. A year to confess. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from in, and he did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird claws. He looked whacked out. Hair all grown out. Fingernails all grown out. Looked like bird claws. Now remember, now Nebuchadnezzar telling the story. This is in his own words. Now listen to verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven. My understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High. And I praised and I honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion. Now listen to what he's saying. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. Mine isn't. He realized that he had lost his kingdom. Okay? Now, verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay his hand. No one can stop God's hand. Does he have a revelation? Who's who's most powerful? Okay, okay. So, I want you to think. You know, because there's there's different things that are happening. You got you see ISIS, you see terrorism, you see this thing that happened with Fifty Shades of Grey, or the perversion. Be see the the devil, a spirit of perversion, would get a hold of one person and then release it through a whole nation, and it's going all around the world now. The sadomasochism and bondage and beating one another and sexual perversion. What the devil gets a hold of one person. And then this, and this releases the spirit to take spiral downhill, downhill, and tail takes nation after nation, circling the drain to go down. Amen. Now, sin is abounding, but grace abounding. will much more abound. Okay, so the, the faith is, the faith is, if God then can through one dream, through one dream, stop this king and get this king's attention, because God will now use this king to influence the nation. Babylon, which is the type of the world. If, you, if we could just understand that part right there, okay, now. At the same time, now, so he says, uh, the army of heaven among the heavens of there, verse 35, and none, none can stop your hand, God. And none can say to you, what are you going to do? Wow. So he, does he confess? Does he repent? Yes. And is he acknowledging God's power over him? Yes, yes. Now what happens, verse 36? At the same time when he begins to confess, God, your kingdom is above my kingdom. At the same time, my reason. Yes. That is mine. Ow. You ever been so whacked out, you just thought you were going to go crazy? Oh, yes. <laughs> didn't have your right mind? No, I didn't. Have you ever went, you ever went through a season you were just about as crazy as Nebuchadnezzar? 
And who at the end of that season gave you mercy? If God can do this for Nebuchadnezzar. See, what are your circumstances right now? I would say that you're not as bad off as Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar now says in verse 36, At the same time my reason returned to me, for the glory and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my brightness returned to me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me. So basically, when he says, all, basically what he's saying is that all his cabinet, all his, you know, the uh, people that were in the, the government with him. See, basically what Daniel did, he gave that prophetic word in front of everybody. Everybody knew Daniel then is reminding people of the word that's been saying. Daniel is saying and been counseling people that he's coming back. That's why they didn't kill him when he's out there acting like an animal. Yeah. So then when they see him, when he comes back, when when Nebuchadnezzar settles it this way, yeah. favor comes this way. Amen. My God, my God. How long will we fight God? How long will we fight the Lordship and the men? Who will really be our God? See, sometimes we want to go to heaven. We don't mind Jesus being our Savior. We just don't want this man to rule over us. As long as I get into heaven by the skin of my teeth, I think I've won. Yeah. Not really. There's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more. What is in your life that you need God to help you with? If God will come up with a strategy for Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be so easy for you. <laughs> it would be so easy for God to concoct a strategy for you. Amen. <laughs> You're not in Nebuchadnezzar's condition. Come on, saints of God. At the same time, when I, when I got this right, then my reason returned to me, and the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned to me, because now I realize there's someone higher than me. There's someone more powerful than I. There's a kingdom above mine. There's a God above my false gods. There's a God higher than me. See, some of us, you know, we... I don't know, when I, when I started really learning deliverance, uh, I was willing to get these, get these things out of me. But I remember coming to... I remember... Because what I would do, I started devouring all these deliverance books. I remember reading in this deliverance book, Antichrist Spirit. I don't have that one. <laughs> That's how you know you really got it. <laughs> I may mean, have some fear, but don't talk to me about that one. <laughs> but when I humble myself and ask for prayer, I didn't. Yawn a demon out. They didn't cough a demon out. I vomited Antichrist spirits out of me. See, because Satan wants to set up his kingdom within you. There's a war over your inner man. Who will? As God wants to influence you, God wants to fill you with His spirit. Satan wants to fill you with demons. It all come down. Who will we choose? See, a lot of times. We, in all honesty, we want Jesus to be our Savior. We just resist Him being Lord. We don't like, we like making decisions and demanding God bless my decision. And when He doesn't bless my choices, I get mad at God. Don't shout me down now, because I'm very true. I'm speaking real life. And uh, I, I wanted to grow. So I saw that book by watching many of the release of his spirit. So I thought, oh, ah, ah, that's going to be real. That's exactly what I need. God's just going to pour out on me. And uh, there's going to be a release of the spirit. But it wasn't about that at all. Slap those devils. Get that self out. Get that independence. Get that self-idolatry. Get that self-will. Get that self-exaltation out of you. I thought I was reading something different. <laughs> Oh, gee, what? Have you, have you ever thought you needed ABC, but God led you to XYZ? And XYZ, what you really needed, 
But you thought you wanted, you wanted peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and God had some broccoli for you. <laughs> Hang on, we're going somewhere still. So he realizes, so, he, so he, he says, My honor and my brightness returned to me, and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. Now, why, why did the counselors seek him out? See, because of Daniel's ministry. See, because of the word that had been spoken of him, that the tree would be cut down, but the stump would remain, and the roots would still be there. And what he was saying is, I will take that stump, I'll take the roots, and we're going to rebuild. But now with a different identity, you're going to have a whole different perspective. So be careful hanging around a John the Baptist and a Jesus because he'll lay the axe to the Because sometimes we build things in the energy of the flesh and God. Sometimes the way, in God's kingdom, sometimes the way up is down. I just, this is just my opinion. I don't think Nebuchadnezzar needed to be out there for seven years. Just I think that one year, he could have confessed and repent. If you read your Bible real correct, yes. the, the Bible says this about Ahab, he was the most wicked king in the history of Israel. Wow. But if you remember, that, there was that one time that he, he had a, he just a measure of repentance, and God said, look upon the heart of, of Ahab, and the judgment that I will bring will not be in his lifetime. God said to Elijah, look, look at Ahab, look at the good choice, and look at his heart right there. I see his heart right there. He, said, he made some type of effort, so the judgment that would come, and if God said, he's the most wicked king in the history of it, it's the hope for you and I, what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. Tony, you see what I'm saying? I said, let God lay the act to the root of evil. Because God would do, He'll tear down, then He'll build up. The Jeremiah ministry, I called you to root out, throw down, pull down, and to destroy, and then I will build. And then I will plant. So let God remove, let God tear down the different things. Okay. Now, verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the honor the King of Heaven. All those works are truth. And his, his ways, judgment. And those who walk in pride, he is able to abase. What did he say back there? He is able to abase. Okay? He brought it, then he cut it down. Okay? How does he know that? Holy Spirit said. How? In reality. Yes. How oh, awesome God is. See, the, God has ways of tearing down. See, he has ways. Uh, see, th this is what you find out about God. God will not build upon false ground. Yay, thank you, Lord. He will not come upon false ground that we build things upon, that he'll tear it down, he root it down, throw it down, pull it down, destroy it, and then he will build and he will play. Allow the act be laid to the root of evil in our hearts. That's where God tried. He tried to do a work in our hearts. That's why John the Baptist said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Don't just sin, confess it. Don't sin, repent. Don't sin, confess, sin, confess. And they go up for years, a decade, somewhere along the line. There's got to be repentance. And God gave, God gave King Nebuchadnezzar time to repent. Yes, Lord. He's given you and I. Yes, he does. Wonderful. Time to repent. Okay, um. Isaiah, I'm now just going to turn at the, at the end of Isaiah 10.30, 10.33 says, The haughty shall be humbled. Was Nebuchadnezzar humbled? Yes. Okay, now I want to go back to, to, to chapter 4, verse 1 again. I want, you, I want to read this again, and you're going to see the difference here. We're going to come in for landing. We're going to reach for the throttle. You're going to hear the tire screech, and we're going to come in for landing. Chapter 4, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar, the king to all the people, the nation, the language, the dwell upon. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to share with you the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought towards me. Now that, that brings more clarity to you now after the message, right? Because he, he's telling you his story. He's telling you how he got restored. Yeah. Verse 3, How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Then he goes in and, and tells a story. Okay, turn to Obadiah and we'll come here for landing. The old 
um, the minor prophet Obadiah. Is God for you or against you? He's for you. And if God be for you, then who? See, the devil trying to get you and I to betray ourselves. That's right. That's how he gets you. When, wow. when, when God told the devil, you could touch Job's body, but you can't kill him, then the devil tried to trick Job, yeah. and he had his wife counsel, why don't you just curse God and die? Just take your life, Job. So the devil couldn't kill Job, so the devil tried to get Job to kill himself right. through the counsel of his ungodly yeah. wife. Okay, Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The pride of your heart has deceived thee. Was Nebuchadnezzar deceived? Yes, the pride. Uh, I've been deceived. Me too. Me too. Pride. When I first got saved, I didn't understand how serious this was. The pride of your heart has deceived thee, O thou that dwells in the cliff of the rock, whose habitation is high, who said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? See, uh, when we when we get into religion, when, when we betray the real Jesus and become religious, we can actually come to church and think, God, you ought to you know, do something for me because I'm taking time out of my schedule coming to your house. You ought to do it. You owe it to me. Be so far. See, lost our gratefulness, our thanksgiving. We lost the whole perspective, the privilege to be in the house of God. When, when, when we're not thanking God almost like daily that you're not in hell. Yeah. <laughs> For the wages of sin is, we could all be in hell. The pride of your heart is deceived, the old thou that dwelt in the cliff of the rock, whose habitation is high, set in his heart. Who will bring me down to the ground? Can't you, can't you see Nebuchadnezzar saying that? Did you hear all those personal prayers? I, me, my, my, my kingdom. I've done this. I've built this. Verse 4. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, though you said your name. Okay, prophetic team, won't you tune in? Close your Bible, so just listen right now, if you would, please. Verse 4, though that you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set your nest upon the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. Now, we have to understand the way up is down. Yes. Okay, so he, he brought Nebuchadnezzar down. To bring him to a place of realizing yes. who had the most power. Yes. Yes. See, and if we are self-willed, self-willed, independent spirit, in control of our own, t- our time, our energy, and our money, and won't let the Lordship of Jesus Christ be established, if we are our own God, full of self-idolatry, and thinking we're doing God a favor, taking time out of our schedule to come to the house of God, they ought to really appreciate me being here. We have missed it. Okay, so God will tear down so he can rebuild. One last scripture, then we're going to close. Turn to Matthew 23. Prophetic team, tune in. Matthew 23 and verse 12. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Now let me define the word abase in the Greek for you. It means whoever exalts himself shall be humiliated. Um, there's a um, there's a book called Beyond Humiliation. Can you remember his name? Gregory Gregory Mantle. I think you had to you had to search on the internet. Uh, it's it's out been out of print for a long. There's a book called Beyond Humiliation. By an author by the name of Gregory Mantle. It's an old time thing it can, that you come to a place that things can't humiliate you anymore. Yeah. That you understand God will tear down. So that basically, uh, did God allow what uh, what was a what was good medicine for Nebuchadnezzar's pride? 
being humiliated. Okay, uh, a good teaching on it wouldn't have got it. You love to get your head cut off. <laughs> okay, so he said, "Whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, which means humiliated, brought low, and cast down." Did that happen in Nebuchadnezzar? Let me say that that I wasn't like an animal for seven years, but I've been through seasons of humiliation. Tastes bad. Very healthy. Yeah. Bad taste. At least bad taste. It's humiliating. <laughs> Good medicine. Whoever shall exalt himself shall be but he that humble himself, he that humble himself shall be exalted. The way up is down. The way to get is to give. But the natural man cannot come in. Bow your heads. Prophetic team, obey the Lord.